Here's a Stratocaster through a tube tape delay. The Rolls Royce. Let's go ahead and listen to 20 different delays. So for example, if I turn on the click track in Pro Tools, I'm gonna to pick up the delay and I'm gonna start twiddling knobs. Now at that point, is it musical? And by the way, when you're setting it, turn everything up. This is the notorious edge setting, but we're not gonna do this at all like the edge. It's like liquefying the guitar tone. So meet me in part two, where we will continue to vastly simplify all of this. Right off the bat, I watched several videos on YouTube about this, and in a lot of cases, I laughed out loud. If you want to understand on a deeper level, then this is for you. If you also just want some blanket answers, really simple and to the point, this is also for you. If you want to dial in an old 50s style slapback echo, here's the non-mathematical, easy, fast answer. Experiment between about 150 milliseconds up to maybe even like 165. Somewhere around there will be kind of the golden spot for the old Chet thing. Now that might be a little bit longer than you find on the internet elsewhere as far as traditional slapback echo times. But this really all goes back to tape machines and early echo effects. And Chet used the Echosonic amp and it had a tape machine in the amplifier. The echo time was fixed, it was non-adjustable. And that echo time of that amplifier was actually a little longer. For comparison's sake, if you set it too short, like say around 125 milliseconds, suffice it to say, 125 is just too short. So you're dealing with a fairly narrow range, around 150-ish for the old Chet stuff. Jimi Hendrix. One of the three or four greatest influences on my entire musical life. It's not hyperbole, along with Chet Atkins and Eric Clapton. If six was nine, 186 milliseconds. In the solo, it kicks on in a more noticeable way. And then at the end, when he's just making sonic effects, you hear that the knobs get turned way up. So you got about seven echoes. You can hear noticeably that when I kick off the delay after those sound effects and I go back into those two notes, doesn't sound quite right anymore because there's absolutely nothing on it. I suspect that it was low in the mix with just a couple of repeats or so and that it got turned up during the solo and then really turned up at the end of the solo. And you know, whether that was done tracking live and Eddie Kramer or somebody was there twiddling knobs while Jimmy played, I don't know. Or whether that was done in mixing, I don't know. You know, I wish I could talk to Eddie about stuff like that. Red House starts about 268 milliseconds and at the end I calculate about 285 milliseconds. My suspicion about that, and from owning a tube tape delay myself, is that not only are those units not entirely perfect, but that also, they may have just been twiddling knobs in the studio. When it starts out, you clearly hear him hit the strings, and you hear a 268 millisecond delay with about one to two repeats. The other thing is that that was certainly a germanium fuzz on the record. We've got a silicon fuzz now, the Roger Mayer Axis fuzz. The other thing about that track is you can clearly hear the echo get louder. The mix knob is actually turned up towards the end of the solo. Lending credence to me thinking, that they probably added that in the mixing phase. Unless somebody was twiddling knobs while Jimmy played, I guess that's entirely possible also, but he wouldn't have been playing and turning the mix knob up and down. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Around 268 to 285 milliseconds, if you want to set a delay around there, 
and dial the mix tastefully back about one to two repeats it'll be a tasteful little thing like if you want to put a delay on a slow blues the edge the edge the edge the edge here's the thing about the edge I'm not a class warrior about the guitar and I'm not interested in becoming one any millisecond time that I give you is going to be very specific to that particular moment so having said that I would say that you want to be living very generally speaking between 375 to 500 ish milliseconds and that's all going to be dependent on the specific piece of music that you're playing like this is at about 417 milliseconds it is useful if you can run a stereo setup parallel if you're using more than one delay you know what I need more gear maybe I need the gear behind me some Marshall stacks then I'll look like I'm legit but once you get that delay set that's what you're gonna do a very texture based simple part the whole post-punk post blues based guitar thing he was an important guitar player to my generation in that sense but the guys that were my formative and primary and greatest influences were all blues based players and of course then the finger picking bag then you got multiple delays in stereo panned hard right and hard left with longer delay times let's just get this right out in the open I don't have the gear to sound exactly like Steve Luther having said that what he would do is run a pair of lexicon PCM 70s and he'd have one set to a pan delay that's 376 milliseconds of delay in the right channel and 768 milliseconds of delay in the left channel and they're going back and forth the thing about the PCM 70s is that it was a multi-tap delay so instead of the repeats happening in even increments for example 200 400 600 800 you could have them repeat at different increments for different rhythms so you could have like 200 550 750 that's the circular delay you'd have on your right channel the shortest delay that's at 292 milliseconds then on the left channel 584 milliseconds and then straight down the middle you've got the longest delay and in this case that was 888 milliseconds the rightmost channel the quickest delay you've got that rolled back down by 3 dB that happens first then in the next channel you've got the 584 millisecond which feels like it's 3 dB louder because it's not rolled back 3 dB then straight up the middle that's perceived as twice as loud because now instead of coming out of one speaker it's coming out of both speakers at the same time so it creates this effect like the sound is circular it's moving around you what you need is the PCM 70s or some kind of a multi-tap delay not to mention a pair of good high gain amplifiers and I would be remiss to not mention Hank Marvin who sadly may be not known by my generation in England there was a group called the Shadows and Hank Marvin was the guitar player Hank was greatly important to all of this and a huge influence on a lot of your heroes George Harrison David Gilmour when I was a kid I heard Tommy Emmanuel talking about him and that sort of was one of the first times at least that I would have heard about Hank and we could just go down the list of great guitar players what Hank would do is use echo units that created a distinct rhythm with the repeats instead of having just one repeat that would repeat at even intervals he would use units such as the Benson which is a vintage unit very expensive on the vintage market now and very rare but he would use units that allowed him to have the repeats themselves contain a definite rhythmic pattern so for example da 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 if that is the hit of the note and the repeat you've got a quick slap with one repeat at 130 milliseconds you've got a second echo that's falling at 430 milliseconds that's from the attack of the original note so the first delay at 130 milliseconds second delay at 430 milliseconds and then you got a third that's falling at about 600 milliseconds 
As Steve Lukather says, when you put more than one delay together, you get the illusion of reverb anyhow. And what Hank would do is get these fabulous tones on the Strat, and it would be drenched in echo that sounded like reverb, but it was really this kind of delay. Now in the digital era, what you want is a multi-tap delay. It's not in perfect time with the music, but it doesn't matter. 130 to 430, that's not a clean multiple. It's offset a little bit. And 600, it's offset a little bit. Of course, Hank Marvin used different delay times and different settings depending on the tune, but the idea is that you can get this multi-tap kind of delay, drench the guitar in echo, and get that kind of a sound. And even if you don't have a multi-tap delay or a Pro Tools setup, or you're not in Logic or any other recording software, you can approximate this if you only have two delay pedals and you run them one into the other. The way that I would set that up is with one at 150 milliseconds and the second unit at 430 milliseconds. And the 430 echo would repeat the slap that's the quick one, that's the 150. So you would get 430 plus 150, you'd get 580. You'd be 20 milliseconds off on each side, but you would have the same kind of effect. And you wanna set it so it's only got one repeat on both delays, and that would get you pretty close. Hello, Gus. Are you tired? Do you want to take a little break and meet me back here in part three? Have a little chicken jerky treat in the meantime? 